This pistol, the Armadix IP-1, and its RFID watch are sold as one of the most secure firearm systems available. The IP-1 requires the watch to be present in order to fire. If the watch is absent, the gun does not fire. In contrast, if you have the watch on your wrist and the watch is held within one foot of the pistol, then when you pick it up and go to fire, it does. Like other so-called smart guns, it's designed so that it can only be fired by its owner, in theory. But a security researcher who goes by the pseudonym Plore has found flaws in the Armadix, both high and low tech, that entirely defeat its security measures. He intends to present his findings at this year's hacker conference, DEF CON. Not only was it insecure, it was insecure in a way that was easier than I had anticipated. He found ways to extend the range of the watch's connection to the pistol, to jam the gun's radio signals, preventing it from firing even when the shooter is wearing the watch. And most alarmingly, to fire the pistol without the watch at all by using simple and cheap magnets. Before finding the magnet attack, Plore used more technically complex tricks. So I have a background in embedded software and embedded hardware, and so I have the instruments and the knowledge to find these vulnerabilities. Plore used sophisticated signal analysis instruments and found the exact frequency that the watch uses to communicate with the pistol. Oh, there we are. When I squeeze the back strap and I scan over the right spot, we see the signal on the oscilloscope at about 5.35 kilohertz for about a millisecond and a half. Plore built a relay that listens for the watch's signal to the pistol, intercepts it, and replays it from another relay 10 or 12 feet away, dangerously extending the range of the authentication watch. One of the devices goes near the watch. The other device is held near the pistol. So even though we're now several feet from the watch, Ordinarily, the gun would not fire, but since we have the relay, it will. Plore also found the watch's signal, authorizing the pistol to fire. So after finding the waveform with the signal generator and the spectrum analyzer, I set out to miniaturize it and came up with this circuit. The circuit happens to use the same transceiver module used in the pistol and the watch to generate a signal at 916.5 megahertz. And by generating that same frequency, the circuit jams the watch and pistol's connection preventing the gun from firing. Ordinarily, the pistol will fire as long as it's close enough to the watch and the watch has been enabled. However, if you have a neighbor or an adversary operating on the same frequency band, it won't work as intended. To simulate this, I've built a transmitter here operating on the same frequency band that the watch and the pistol use. So I'm going to turn it on, place it here, and step back some distance. And although the gun would ordinarily fire from this distance, it does not now. But Plore also found a surprisingly simple vulnerability that makes it possible to fire the pistol without the watch at all, even if the gun has been stolen from its owner. Magnets. If I take the magnet and place it on the pistol in the right spot, it does fire. So essentially with $15 worth of magnets, I cracked a $1,500 smart gun. Plore dug up Armadix's patents and tore down the gun and located the electromagnetic locking mechanism of the pistol's firing pin. So this electromagnet is actuated by the microcontroller in the pistol grip when it receives an authentication token from the watch. Ordinarily, there's no attraction. The, the magnet is off. However, when we squeeze the grip and pull the trigger halfway, the magnet is activated and a paper clip will stick to it. This is the side of the gun. When the trigger is pulled part way, this is depressed, lifting the silver part. The silver part is ferrous, meaning that it will be attracted by the electromagnet that we saw earlier. However, if you take a really big external magnet, we can stand in for the electromagnet, and it doesn't matter if the gun is authorized to fire. It doesn't even matter if the gun has batteries in it. With the external magnet in place, then when we pull the trigger part way, the external magnet pulls the ferrous material further, unblocking the firing pin, allowing the gun to fire when the hammer strikes the firing pin. Hacking the watch and pistol's communication requires a number of expensive tools, but the magnets can be bought online by anyone. So there's an ethical dilemma in hacking about whether we should sit on the information that we learn or whether we should share it with the world. On the one hand, a kid might not know how to do this attack and you might be teaching them how to do it. On the other hand, a kid might discover it independently and the parents would be uh, unaware of it, it's even being possible. So we have to balance that between the need to know and the need to be able to fix things. Gun control groups have been pushing for smart gun adoption for years, 
but many gun rights advocates strongly oppose them, fearing that a flawed, expensive technology will be legally mandated. So personally, I believe that you should be able to own a smart gun if you want one, but you should not be required to own a smart gun. And if you do choose to buy a smart gun, it should at least do what it claims to do. Plore alerted Armadix, the German company that makes the IP1, about the flaws in the pistol's design. Armadix acknowledged Plore's findings to Wired and didn't dispute that the attacks were possible. They argued that in some cases the security breaches he demonstrated wouldn't be easy or practical. A spokesperson writes, our experiences with the strengths and weaknesses of the IP1 system will flow into the next generation of smart gun system. While Plor is demonstrating potentially dangerous flaws in the Armadix IP1, he says he takes comfort in knowing that very few of the guns have sold so far. He hopes his findings can serve as an early warning and will help to secure future smart guns before they become widely adopted. So as for other guns that are in the market, other smart guns, I'd love to get a hold of them and test them out, see how secure they really are. My hope is that manufacturers going forward won't rely on the sort of attacks that you can mount with a simple magnet. Um, more complicated mechanisms like motor drives might be more appropriate. If smart guns are ever going to become standard, in other words, they'll have to be smarter than this one.